Imagine an island. With gorgeous white beaches, idyllic palm tree landscapes and tropical jungle. Pretty tempting, isn't it? But if you dare to set foot on this island, you can expect certain death. The island is considered one of the most dangerous islands in the world with one of the most isolated tribes on earth. And this tribe wants to continue to spend its future without the influence of the modern world, which is why the island is defended at all costs. Numerous tourists have already had to pay with their lives as a result. But what is this mysterious island all about, which people live there and why do they defend their island to the death? We look at all these questions in today's video. The island we are looking at today is called North Sentinel Island and is part of the Andaman Archipelago. This collection of islands is located in the Indian Ocean, about 300 kilometers off the coast of Myanmar. Politically however, they belong to India, which is much further away. However, this does not mean that India has actual sovereignty over all the islands. On the contrary, Indian citizens are even banned from entering some of the islands as they are considered too dangerous. But no other island beats North Sentinel Island. But who exactly lives there? The indigenous people there are known as the Sentinelese and are the oldest population in the whole of South Asia. They populated the island around 60,000 BC and are considered the closest descendants to our ancestors in Africa. The customs and traditions of prehistoric man are still practiced there, as there was no contact with the outside world for almost 60,000 years. However, we actually know very little about the people living there, as it is very difficult to establish contact. The first documented approach took place in the year 1867, when an Indian merchant ship ran aground on a reef and was completely destroyed. The crew fled to the island, but it soon became clear that Sentinelese are not necessarily known for their hospitality. The castaways were immediately attacked and a Royal Navy rescue team was only able to recover a few alive. The story spread throughout the British Empire and the island quickly became known as one of the most dangerous in the world. But the British wanted to colonize the islands so they made further contact. In a rather barbaric act, they kidnapped a couple and some children in order to civilize them. However, the couple immediately died of disease so the children were sent back. But they too had already contracted the western diseases and now brought them to the island. However, the majority of the tribe survived the epidemic. However, this could have been the source of their deep hatred of foreign civilization. And the British also gave up trying to colonize the islands. Renewed attempts at rapprochement were only made again after Indian independence. Both Indian exploration parties and extreme adventurers visited the islands from time to time. Even though many of these visits ended fatally for the invaders, there were also peaceful rapprochements. For example, an Indian anthropologist and his team were able to establish friendly contact with some of the inhabitants by entering the island with plenty of coconuts and other gifts. He was able to spend a few days exploring the local culture, but it was made clear to him that staying too long would also prove fatal for him. From this research, we know that the indigenous people live as hunters and gatherers and that their way of life is very similar to that of prehistoric Africans. However, their language, religion and most of their customs remain a mystery to this day. As most attempts to approach the island still ended fatally, the Indian government banned them from entering the island and approaching closer than five nautical miles, so that future contact was also denied. Only every ten years does an Indian Navy ship approach the island for a census. This involves throwing a few coconuts on the beach and seeing how many people emerge. It is estimated that between 40 and 500 people live on the island. So it's not really an accurate census. The attitude of the sentinels towards intruders remains the same and cruel news from the island continues to reach us. In the year 2006, for example, two Indian crab fishermen washed up on the island and were both killed immediately. When a helicopter flew over the island during the tsunami in the year 2004, it was attacked with a bow and arrow. And in the year 2018, a Christian missionary from Missouri set foot on the island because he felt compelled to convert the inhabitants. But the last thing that was found of him was the diary entry, I don't want to die. Despite the beautiful tropical idol, you should therefore book your next beach adventure somewhere else. The island remains a true mystery to this day and one of the last unexplored places in the midst of our globalized world. 